Grazie della sua disponibilità, Senatore Monti. Lei ha Thank you, Senator Monti, for talking to us. You've been the Prime Minister of Italy. You also have many years of experience with European institutions and are currently the President of Bocconi University in Milan. President Trump has announced that the nuclear agreement as is with Iran is not in America's interests. The European Union instead has defended the agreement. In what direction do you think Italy should go? L'Italia in che direzione dovrebbe andare? L'Italia... Italy, of course, is part of the European Union, and the European Union, as you said, has unanimously defended this agreement. I believe that it is in the general Italian interest to strengthen the European Union's common foreign and defense policy. And so, after Italy has worked with other countries to reach a European decision, only extremely serious reasons should move Italy away from such a decision later. There have been times when EU sanctions, not only the previous ones against Iran, but also the ongoing sanctions against Russia, have particularly hurt Italy and especially Italian small and medium-sized enterprises. Nevertheless, in Italy, we clearly see a strategic interest in the EU affirming its own identity and position on world affairs. That's worth some economic sacrifice. Europe negotiated for this agreement for years, before reaching eventually an agreement with Iran and the US. This deal has been in place for a few years now. Do you think that it is a good deal? Yes, I do. Also, let me remind you that it wasn't achieved such a long time ago. I understand that to the U.S. president it may seem like it was in a different historical era. I fully share the American approach according to which it is not enough to have an agreement that is deemed good at the time of signing, it also is necessary to ensure the agreement's effective implementation. Well, the International Atomic Energy Agency has verified eight times the effective implementation by Iran of all nuclear-related commitments. There is a comprehensive and strict monitoring system in place. Therefore, the burden of proof is on those who want to suspend and no longer observe the agreement. Senator Mario Monti received us in his office at the Italian Senate in Rome. The former Italian Prime Minister between 2011 and 2013 and a well-respected economist, he worked also for several years as European Commissioner for Competition and Financial Integration. One of the criticisms on the nuclear deal in America is that despite the statements by the IAEA that everything looks fine, inspections do not apply to some military sites. Non riguardano per contratto potremmo dire alcuni siti militari. Some in the US suspect those sites may hide illicit activities. Do you think this may be a problem? Well, we had years of inspections in a territory other than Iran, but not far away, Iraq. After those inspections drew so much distrust, particularly but not exclusively in America, it turned out that the inspections revealed the truth. My point is that if, over time, with our experience of the Iran agreement growing, we see a hole in the fabric of the deal, this should be subject to further discussion, negotiation and debate. Ma tra questo e 
There is a very big difference between that and saying the whole agreement has become useless or harmful. On this point, it seems that Europe is not only defending the agreement, but also diplomacy as a tool of international relations. The US president in his speech made it clear that a wider strategy is needed, and perhaps other tools, as this agreement does not suit American interests. What is the interest of Europe and Italy regarding Iran? Clearly, it is to ensure security, and this is our primary goal. That said, Europe attaches great importance to the value of signed agreements. They actually are part of its DNA. Whether the agreements have been reached by diplomats or through the direct and proactive engagement of heads of government, these are multilateral agreements. Allora, quello che eh, viene spontaneo è di collocare questo tema di disengagement di Iran in a slightly wider framework. Quello che viene spontaneo è di collocare questo tema di disengagement di Iran in a slightly wider framework. dall'accordo sull'Iran in un quadro un po' più ampio. Per esempio, in the context of the Paris Climate Agreement di Parigi. I do not want to overstate it here, but I see a trend by President Trump in both cases to unilaterally question certain agreements that have been reached multilaterally. This is something that worries me and that worries Europeans, especially given that the entire European Union structure obviously is based on long-lasting agreements which can be modified, but only multilaterally pursuant to a consensus. So what lies behind the different approaches? Europe still harbors the wish, with all of Europe's weaknesses and difficulties, to keep a multilateral approach when it comes to making global decisions. Perhaps this is no longer the U.S. policy under the new administration of President Trump. But I believe that the U.S. always should consider, whether looking at climate change or Iran's nuclear dossier, la valutazione dell'oggetto dell'accordo. Not only the specific content of an agreement, but also what may be the long-term consequence of the most important and most powerful country in the world questioning or withdrawing from multilateral agreements. Senator, it seems like European pressure successfully prevented the U.S. government from taking a decisive step away from the deal. European leaders may be willing to reopen somehow a dialogue with Iran to modify some elements of the agreement if necessary. It seems that you agree that it is okay to sit again at the negotiating table. Sure, because none of these matters should be dogmatic. If there are any additions to be introduced or monitoring mechanisms to be reinforced and so on, matters that were not included at the beginning, they should be discussed. It seems reasonable to me to do so. What is more problematic is just to say, instead, you know what, I leave. You talked earlier about the economic relations between Europe and Iran and between Italy and Iran. Italy is one of the biggest trade partners of Iran and has signed many agreements in the railways sector, for example. How much should economic interests matter? And should Italy defend its position against any change in the deal that could endanger its investments in Iran? 
L'Italia ha dimostrato in altri casi, da ultimo quello delle sanzioni. Italy has proven with sanctions against Russia that sometimes, unfortunately, one has to sacrifice legitimate economic interests in order to guarantee security even during a severe economic crisis, which now we are hopefully leaving behind. Il obiettivo principale che è quello di garantire la sicurezza, quindi io credo che sia Ultimately, uh, it is a political decision to weigh legitimate economic in interests against security interests. Di, uh, non gli so I think it is necessary and legitimate in a political uh, system not to neglect economic uh, interests, but rather to evaluate them and then to factor them in to a political decision at the national level and later at the European level. That is where any decision on foreign policy takes shape. A livello di decisione politica va fatto evidentemente Ultimately, it is a political decision to weigh legitimate economic interests against the superior interest, I believe, of strategic security. Strategico della sicurezza. The agreement with Iran was based on the idea that the economic opening would benefit Iranian society and help it progress toward the full democracy. Secondo lei, Do you think this approach has worked so far? In un certo senso finora? Certo non e, e anche Not perfectly, for sure. Nevertheless, it is true that these are cause-effect relationships that do not occur quickly. So it is necessary to give time for these effects to manifest themselves. We certainly must take into account also what may be the overall reaction in a country that feels besieged and that could choose its leadership accordingly, perhaps siding eventually with the hardliners. International sanctions clearly created a very complicated situation for Tehran. When they were lifted, Iran received foreign investments and signed international agreements. However, some difficulties remain, as European banks and companies still have to worry about American secondary sanctions and therefore about the possibility of American sanctions if they invest in Iran. What do you think about such a situation? And what could happen if U.S. sanctions on Iran increase? This is a great example of what we said before in more general terms. The more we manage to agree on a multilateral governance of these phenomena of international politics and economy, the better it is. This way, we reduce the inconsistencies that heavily impact, directly or indirectly, companies that have relations with Iran. Companies have obligations toward their home country and toward the country that has established certain penalties for foreign companies that do not comply with its sanctions. So in my understanding, it is very important to know what are the real points of divergence between the United States and Europe and then to try to agree on solutions. Over the next months, the U.S. Congress could increase sanctions or take unilateral decisions. There is a concern that this may in fact break the alliance between America and Europe or at least take it to very low levels. Some say that actually Europe may find itself working closer with Iran than the U.S. on the nuclear issue. What do you think of that? That would be an unsuitable and dangerous precedent. Look, this takes us back to the larger picture set by the Trump administration. Let's take the topic of international trade, which basically also includes business or investment relations with Iran.
del commercio internazionale. Se c'è stata una crescita Generally speaking, we can say that the world has seen major economic growth over the last decades because free trade has prevailed with clear rules agreed to multilaterally or bilaterally. Laterali, multilaterali, un po' per volta è prevalso e è prevalso. And that has happened with a common impetus given by the US and the EU. Before most of the world joined them. Raccolto in sé l'adesione di parti crescenti del resto del mondo. Così come nella leadership. The same happened with the leadership of the global fight against climate change, which certainly has a longer history in Europe than elsewhere, but that has seen more and more countries joining since the Kyoto Agreement. Sempre di più e da ultimo in modo convinto anche gli Stati Uniti. More recently, the U.S. convincingly showed its support for that fight so that China and India too came on board. And then there was the U.S. withdrawal, and French President Macron became the new flag bearer of the battle against climate change. What I would like to see on the American side is the most influential and important country in the world for many years to come, despite the economic advance of China, being more conscious of what leadership means and how important it is to lead others. In the modern world, if I may say, the goal of America first requires collaboration of multilateral organizations which help keep the international market and economy open. Otherwise, an assertive unilateralism and withdrawal from the fora where world powers have been trying to talk and solve problems together may eventually weaken the United States. You said that Europe is interested in security as well. What would you say to an American right now? Does the current agreement with Iran make Europe and America safe? I think they are safer with this agreement than without it. It would be even better if this deal were to be marginally improved in order to strengthen the monitoring of its implementation. And let us not forget that, if I remember geography correctly, Iran is closer to Europe than it is to the United States. Therefore, we are and we must be sensitive to security interests and any security threats. In his speech, President Trump has announced more secondary sanctions against the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Many Americans have asked the President to put the IRGC on a blacklist, defining them as a terrorist organization. Ora, non c'è precedente. Now, there is no precedent of sanctioning a state organ, basically what the IRGC are in Iran. Di fatto, le guardie rivoluzionarie sono un organo dello Stato in Iran. Are you worried about the prospect of defining a terrorist, neither an individual nor an organization which is independent from a state, but a part of a state itself? Come organizzazione terrorista. Isn't that the risky scenario? Secondo lei è uno scenario rischioso, la preoccupa? Posso solo dirle... I can only tell you this, which is a different thing, but with some similarities. For some time, I used to be the European Commissioner for Competition, a sort of a watchdog of global competition. At that time, we considered whether we could or should intervene against OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, a cartel of states, potentially intervening against them as we would do against any cartel of companies by imposing heavy penalties, even criminal ones. Effettivamente quei casi in cui organi 
Indeed, those cases in which state organs and authorities engage in acts that non-state entities would be sanctioned for committing well, that is a problem that I believe political scientists, law professors and security experts should evaluate. In this case, the security should evaluate. I understand that it would be I understand that it would be a huge step, but it is not appropriate for me to comment on that. Senator Monti, thanks a lot. Thanks to you.